Hi there. In this video, we're going to look at logic in writing. How do we build a logical argument? How can we spot flaws in arguments? This is useful not just for critiquing argumentation that you find in a source, but also for spotting weaknesses in your own argumentation so you can improve it. So first, let's look at how we build a logical argument. Let's say that I'm writing an essay where I want to argue the following point. Students should not use mobile phones for classwork. I've also collected various arguments that all support this point. Students are distracted by other apps. Students can't read and annotate an article properly on the phone screen and students will get lower grades if they use phones in class. To make an argument that is strong and convincing, I need to do more than just collect all these ideas together. I need to take my reader logically, step by step, through each of these points, building from one to the other in a logical way that guides the reader to my conclusion that mobile phones should not be used for classwork. So let's see how we can do that. So first of all, this is the point that I'm trying to argue. So this is where our argument is heading. The other three points here are arguments that all contribute to the overall point that we're trying to argue. So let's represent that visually. Now let's look at the logical connections between these three arguments. If you look carefully at these three arguments, I think you'll notice that this argument, students will get lower grades, is a bit of a different argument from the other two. Being distracted and not being able to read and annotate properly are direct effects of using a mobile phone for classwork. But getting lower grades is itself a result of being distracted and not being able to read or annotate the article properly. So let's change this around to show that logical connection. So when you collect your arguments, think carefully about the logical connections between them. Are they all independent arguments? Or do some of your arguments depend on others? Another way to improve logic in your argumentation is to make sure that you're not missing out any steps in the argumentation. When we miss out steps, we risk not taking our reader with us in our argument. So if you look at this part of the argumentation again, you'll see that there's actually a logical step missing here. Students are distracted by other apps. Students can't read and annotate articles properly on the phone screen. OK, but why do those things lead to lower grades, actually? We haven't really made that link very clear. If students are distracted and can't read the material properly, I would say that they're less engaged with the material overall. When students are less engaged in the material, they aren't going to be able to achieve as high a grade in an exam or essay. So let's add that missing step in. Now I'm fairly happy with this flow of argumentation and I've made sure that I'm not missing out any steps. So we can now write this out in full sentences. The steps that are required to get to a logical conclusion to make an argument logical are called premises. Usually, for a logical argument, you need at least two premises to logically lead to your conclusion. Let's look at another example. I like cooking nice food, therefore I spend a lot of money at the supermarket. There's only one premise here. I like cooking nice food. I need another premise to make the logical step from cooking nice food to spending a lot of money. What premise or what step is missing here? Well, we need to add that nice food requires expensive ingredients. Otherwise, 
we actually haven't made it clear how nice food relates to higher prices. Now, when I combine the first two premises, that I like cooking nice food, and that nice food requires expensive ingredients, then, logically, I arrive at the conclusion that I must spend a lot of money at the supermarket. Apart from using logic in your own arguments, it's important to be able to assess how logical other people's arguments are, especially if you want to adopt or refute their points of view. How can we spot flaws in arguments? Well, we've looked already at when an argument has a missing premise, but there are other ways to spot flaws in argumentation. We're going to look at two broad ways to approach this. First of all, we're going to look for logical flaws. Sometimes an argument looks reasonable, but there's a flaw or a failure in the logic. These logical flaws or failures are also called logical fallacies. There are lots of different types of logical fallacy, we're just going to look at three that you might encounter. Post hoc ergo propter hoc. This is Latin, and it means after it, therefore caused by it. Basically, this fallacy is when somebody says that because B happened after A, A caused B. An example of this would be, I drank that water, I became ill afterwards, and therefore the water made me ill. The argument put forward here is that because I got ill after drinking the water, it must be that the water caused me to become ill. But actually, there could be other causes. Just because one happened before the other doesn't mean necessarily that one caused the other. Slippery slope. The phrase slippery slope is a metaphor. When you take a step onto a slippery slope, you can easily end up sliding right to the bottom. So a slippery slope fallacy is when someone claims that taking one small step along a course of action will lead inevitably to extreme consequences. An example of this would be, if we build this solar farm, the coal industry will go bankrupt and there will be lots of unemployment. Therefore, we shouldn't build this solar farm. So, according to this argument, just taking one step of building a solar farm will lead directly to extreme consequences of bankruptcy and mass unemployment. However, in reality, there's a long way to go between building one solar farm and destroying the coal industry. An either-or or false dilemma fallacy is, as the name suggests, where you create a false dilemma. Basically, this involves presenting a situation as if it's a choice between two alternatives in order to force the reader towards a certain conclusion, when, in reality, the situation may not be so black and white. So, here's an example. Either we ban flying, or we accept that climate change is inevitable. Is this correct? If we aren't prepared to ban flying completely, do we have to accept climate change? Well, maybe we don't have to completely ban flying. Maybe we could reduce it or use other measures to encourage more environmentally friendly choices. So, this is creating a dilemma in order to win an argument, but the dilemma is not really an accurate representation of reality. Another way to criticize an argument is to attack the premises. So, an argument might seem logical and have all the necessary premises. However, you might not agree with all of the premises. So, going back to my example from earlier, some of you might have already disagreed with me that cooking nice food requires expensive ingredients. In that case, you could argue against me by attacking this premise, even though overall the argument is logical. Now, you should be able to build and evaluate your own logical arguments and use the same skills to evaluate the argumentation of other scholars. Always look for the steps in an argument and how they fit together. Is it logical? Are any steps missing? 
Are there steps that you disagree with? In fact, this skill will help you in more than just your academic work. You can practice evaluating logic and argumentation anytime you come up against people trying to argue a point or convince you of something. And that happens a lot on social media, in the news, or even just when you get into a debate with your friends. So, practice trying to spot logical weaknesses in other people's arguments and apply the same techniques to evaluate and improve your own writing as well. That's all for this time. See you next time.